Du, 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 du. Hey, Instagram, it's me, T, from the Patterson State of Train to Tibet. Well, it's the last one. I leave later this night. I mean, it's like, well, first of all, let me just say, we're in Blue Light. So, shout out to Blue Light Brigade. Hey, Jesse Lane 21. Don't know who you are, but there you are. Um, as you know, we've been doing this, you know, for the last, uh, well, we've been here in India since uh, March, March, April, yeah, March, whatever, February, March. And uh, we're leaving tonight to go back to South Africa. And one of the things that came for some healing, and just before I came, like two weeks to get the Bill's palsy came down on me and did, left. Now I'm up to this part here, got to straighten this up. But, well, my voice is back, but, you know, still got to do this little work here. Um, as soon as I get it done, I'll, well, it fixed my face, actually, because this was all, I looked like Uncle Rucker's, you know, whatever, and, 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 but, but it's coming back, so, <sighs> gotta keep on going, you know, in fact, well, I'll talk to you later, uh, this is a special one, this is the last one I'm doing here, so, um, the last one, one meaning that, here's where I prepare my, my, uh, uh, breaking fast, eating the water thing, and I walk you through the whole thing, and then I show you my setup, and I talk, I blah, blah. So, this is not, this is for archival purposes only. So, if you hear, uh, you don't know who I am, or something like that, you may not want to stay, because it's going to be a little while. So, first of all, let me just try to get everything together. Got, my, got the bowl that thing goes into, right? Then I got to, uh, usually I, what I do, I, I get another little bowl here. Let me pull this down a little. Well, that's not going to do much, even though frame mine got a little head space there, a little bit less, okay. Oh, this shirt here, this t-shirt I got when I first came, there was a, a, a concert at, at the youth center, what they call these, but it's a compound. And uh, I'm staying at a place where the band that played at this con con conference, that's when I came, conference, at this concert, uh, they, they, they um, well, they did, they, they performed, so I was there, I just bought this t-shirt, it's not a band's t-shirt, it's just a... Youth Fest or something like that, I don't know what you Why am I turning around, you know? <laughs> this is Instagram, right? They comes in. Well, actually, I, I convert this to one of my YouTube channel later, so it'll come out. Right? Okay, so then what I do is I take the stuff that I'm going to eat in the morning. Uh, got a little papaya left, so I'm going to use the papaya, right? Got a little bit of watermelon left because yesterday, all day Monday, actually from Sunday night to Monday, uh, I do, I do a, a fast. You can call it intermittent fast if you want to. And usually I go to, uh, I'm li not legally, but I could actually stop on Sunday night and then have a meal again. But usually I go through Tuesday morning, which is what it is right now. Um, so I, 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 um, I, I fast by uh, eating, I decided, well, it's watermelon season here in, uh, in India. So I decided, hey, no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't need to lose, well, lose weight or whatever. I'm not into that thing. I just need, I, I need to fast. So I want to fast away from carbohydrates. Not that I've been doing any carbohydrates because I, as you can see, I've lost a lot of weight. Now I got to do my muscle mass back up because I'm down to where I am. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyways, so I got the uh, uh, papaya, got the watermelon. Usually you don't mix watermelon with stuff because it's red fruit, it's very hot. But if, it, if it's a neutral color like what, like apples or even papaya, I think you, you can do it. So I take that, oh, I got some, I got some last little bit of prunes, I'll put that in there because I'm going to use the, uh, this is coconut water that has, uh, well, it's uh, goji berries, uh, raisin, and uh, chia seed in the, in the coconut water. So I put it up in the refrigerator. Um, and so it, it, it hydrates, and so I use that, and I and, uh, use a cucumber, and <laughs> limes, so these are two lemon well, lemon lime, limes, right? And then I usually put that there, oh, and I usually do a seed mix, and I had a mortar and pestle that I, I crushed the seeds, and I soak my fish with it. And I've taken to take a walnut. This is a it's wonderful being in India because they got real stuff. 
you can tell it's blue light. Uh, this is a sprouted sprouted walnut. So I, I usually take that in the morning first and I crush the walnut, then I put the seeds and I crush that together, and then I put it in a bowl like this, and then I take the uh, lime, where's my lime? Take the lime, cut it in half, and I, I just, I gave my squeezer away, it's a long story, but I'm like, long in there. Uh, I cut the lime, and then I, I, I let it marinate in the, in the bottom there. But this morning, I am not going to use the seeds. In fact, I, I, I'm altering my my routine. That uh, when I break my fast on the on the, when I go through on Tuesday, then I won't use the seeds to start off with. Oh, by the way, I did my regular thing every every morning. I, I usually wake up about four o'clock or something like that. And uh, sometimes I wake up early, but then I'll go back to sleep, whatever it is. But I've taken to taking clothes. These are clothes. I take. I usually take one clove about that time. I put it under my tongue and let it, then when it comes about this time, then you know, first light or something, like whenever I wake up like 6 o'clock, wake back up, then I usually, when I'm making that, I usually chew on this stuff. So, but this is actually going to stay. I've decided this is going to stay in uh here in Oroville because I'm gonna be back. Uh and I'll tell you about that. Well no, I'll tell you about it now. I originally wanted to be back uh, I have this whole drama going on in South Ireland going on for years for my permanent residency. And it's supposed to supposed to be in the works was uh, over a year ago it doesn't matter. But you know they still mucking around. So I originally there's stuff happening in Dimbaz, I'll tell you about that later, where I'm based out of South Africa. So um, I plan to come back here because now I'm, I'm, my access will be like South Africa, Southern region, right, and uh, Southern India, Tamanadu, where all the you know melanated people are. Uh, so those are the two places I want to be. So once a year, maybe about three months out of the year, I come here for some healing, um, and then I do all my 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 toiling <laughs> in, uh, in in Eastern Cape. Uh, I don't I'm, I'm trying to avoid the states as much as possible. Let me just say that. Right? So what I so so what I think I'm gonna do, I would the next time I scheduled to come back here was gonna be let me start cutting. Was uh to be like uh, January twenty twenty six. That's what I scheduled myself, you know, in my head that's what I was gonna do. But then you know what happened? I realized not that I realized, but I, I'm saying like Wait a second, let me rinse this off. Usually I use the uh, uh, baking soda, put the soap the stuff in. Um, the baking soda should be enough, but you know, what can you say? Well, it is, it's enough, but sometimes I just uh, rinse it off. Because, I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. I use that, the, uh, the line, and already did the, uh, what it um, the papaya and then before so now what I do is I usually I take this and I usually I can do the I said I do the uh, the seeds and whatever crush that and then I put the what do you call this thing the cucumber in with the lime with, no I'm sorry put the put the the, the nuts the, the ground up stuff there I take the um, lime and I squeeze that there and let that marinate for a while. And then I put, um, let me get this stuff and get my other thing. And then I, I use, uh, let me get this now. Then, next thing I usually add the uh, chili paprika. I know you're supposed to use cayenne pepper, but that's the way it's shook out here in India. I, 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 I don't make up, I, I just go with the flow. And, and let that marinate for a while. That, while that's marinating, put this stuff over here. While that's marinating, um, I, cut, I cut this here and put that and put that in the bottom, right? Now what I'm gonna, here's what I was gonna show you before. What I'm going to do, see I'm gonna leave here and I got this black salt. The black salt goes on top of uh, this here, the cucumber. So let me start doing that right now, and I'll tell you what to do with that black salt. 
So first I cut the cucumber in half. Now if you'll notice, you see this cucumber, it's still a, a, it's a melon, like what it's a melon, right? But you see, you have the rind, the green rind. And you know when you go to restaurants, they usually just cut the thing and then, you know, I don't know, uh, they eat, you, I don't eat the rind, right? But if you notice, see, it's seeded, but it has all this other white stuff there for the rind too. Now when you're doing that juicing, I'm sorry, I'm not really a big into juicing thing. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll use a, uh, what do you call it, a blender, but I'm really, uh, not sure about the juicer. I'm, I'm sort of like, if I get a juicer, I will do it, but uh, I don't know about juice, um, I say cut, putting rind in the juice and all, I don't know. Anyway, so then I cut as much as this thing off as possible. Kind of. See, all this rind, all this rind I cut, so there's no seed in this part. You say, well, brother, why do you do that? Well, let me tell you why I do that. Because, um, first of all, I don't like the taste of the rind. <laughs> and two, what I do is I put the, you know, I have a disposable thing for almost like in Southern Africa. And to me, I throw that out into the, into the grass there, whatever, outside. And when the cows come along, I'm basically getting the cows something to eat. <laughs> So I don't, I never, I, I'm not really wasting food. To me, it's still in the system. It's like energy. Energy, you still have the energy. Energy just takes a different form, you know? So, so basically, I'm helping the uh, cows to, to eat. And like I said, I take, a, I take most of this white rind, inside rind, off. I mean, I don't have to be that precise because I guess you can eat this stuff, but. I just, I'm just not into it. I don't know why I don't like it, but I don't really, I'm not appreciative of it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, get this off, come on. Okay, I don't have to be that precise. So that's, that goes down. I cut this part too off like that. So, okay, there we go. So like I was saying, um, I have this thing where Every once in a while, I'm doing something in the food. I'm working with food, and it'll jump off the plate or something like that. And I have this thing. I think that, well, all that is is like, you know, the ancestors or whatever are saying, hey, feed me. You know, you can't just make the food for yourself. You're not feeding me. So it jumps off so I can feed whoever's, uh, whoever needs the food, right? You'll see later, I have I make altars where I go, or I make altars where I, where I sit down. And I have always have an altar travel water. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so back to the point. So as I as I do this, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do today and whatever it is. So, um, and I, and actually the, the morning hours, this is right before blue light, is when I started writing or thinking or something like that. And I finished my, well, we'll go back over there later. Um, I finished my little uh, project I was working on for my 52 days. So, okay, so this is enough. So here we go, boom, um, I cut this in half like this, cut this in half like, oh this is a lot of, okay, cut this in half like that. If I open it up, and to me, this, if there's too much white rind, I might cut it off, but I'm going to leave it for today. And now I dice up, no, this is too much rind, no, I'll leave it. Then I, Sort of dice it like that. Now, this, here's the other thing. When I'm preparing, for, I call myself a preparer of food. You know, I prepare. Some people cook. Some people, whatever they do, I prepare. Now, I've, I've one of the jobs, one of the many jobs I task that I've been doing on this planet is at one point I did craft service for the movie industry. Uh, mainly out of the East Coast, out in New York, and stuff like that. But um, and for about two, two and a half seasons, whatever well, season, I did the Sopranos, and I learned a lot boy, about food, or whatever happened. But in craft services, basically you, you prepare little snacks. Sometimes you have more elaborate meals, but they have the regular, you know, chefs, cook, cook trucks, or whatever uh, that they do. So craft service is very important because we have the little snacks we make, uh, what do you call it, sandwiches and, 
and you know, we'll make smoothies and all that other stuff. stuff. But the trick or well, thing about craft service is that it's your comfort food, it's your snacks and stuff like that. So a lot of times you don't have the, the cast or whatever have it, they come to you. And you're the only um, uh, unit in the whole thing that, you know, you don't really have to jump on the year you do like that. But, you know, if something's done on a, on a set, they need to do stuff and they need to do it right away. So, you know, you, 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 you know, but craft service, we don't have that sort of, how you say that, we don't have that sort of a, a stress, you know. So people come to craft service for stress relief. So we can't be stressed, so we're, we're good, goody, goody, good people. In fact, was when I worked, I think it was uh, uh, the end of the second season, all of the third season, and part of the fourth season. And if you notice, let me just say, I, I did some uh, you notice, the best season for us apparently was the third season, but we won't get into that. And that's because I'm working craft service. I'm giving the love. I'm giving the energy that they need to have a successful program. Okay, you know, I'll leave that alone. Um, so anyway, so now, oh, so you like cut it up, and then I put it in the, uh, and of course you got a little bit of liquid there. I put it in the bowl. Now here's where the, the magic begins. I just like to say that they say magic beans. I don't really mean it. There's no magic here. Uh, then I take the black salt, and I usually use, I'm into numbers, so I do threes. So like, I'm a, Plus, you know, tomorrow my birthday, July 3rd, get it? Anyway, so um, so I put three pinches of the black salt on the um, cucumber that that dude is going to do. Now, I'm not going to take this black salt with me, heavy and whatever, I'm not taking this out. So I'm actually going to leave it here, and I'm going to leave, see there's a cabinet up here that nobody uses right up there. See, and I'm gonna leave some stuff in there because uh, though I was supposed to be back, I said I was gonna be back in uh, 2026. I might come back early. I might come back in 2025. Mm. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna leave like the yoga mat. I'll show you what I'm gonna leave. So now I'm gonna take this these clothes and put it in with the black salt. to save, so when I come back, I don't have it, you see, Ta -da. always thinking, so that's, I mean the people at the guest house don't know it yet, I'm going to make a deal with them, anyway, so that's it, so this is going to stay here, put that up there later, put this out the way, uh, okay, we'll keep on going, now what we do, like I said before, we usually have the nuts in there, or the seeds and nuts in there. And then I have, I gave, I have a, a, a squeezer, you know, whatever squeezer. And, but I gave it away to this brother last night. It's in a band. Man, it's called, uh, what's it called? Dark Dawn. Yeah, Dark Dawn? I think it's Dark Dawn. And uh, I post up on Instagram, there's this a thing up there, a the little bit of that rehearsal, just introduce some things. Oh, I got some mosquitoes. I'm like running around. Uh, so, then I usually uh, take this thing and, and put the thing in there. just a second. Mosquitoes bother me. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Dun, dun, dun. Citronella incense. Usually I use the um, match, you know, wooden match, but they got to be a pain after a while. So, I'm going to light this here like this. Citronella incense. Got one in the bathroom. Oh, that one out already. Got one in the, uh, the bathroom over there. There we go. Put this in my, uh, this one of those Orville things. They have the Orville has a, has a uh, what do you call that? A symbol, and they make like uh, incense holders. A bunch of things. You see the symbol around. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna let that waft over. Maybe the mosquito will leave me alone. Now, the lime, the real lime, it has seeds. So what I do is I, before I, you know, when I had the other thing I do, I take this. 
I got to just get rid of the seeds. Like I said, it's going to be a long time, so not, not everybody needs to hang with this for a couple of purposes only. So they do that. So back, back to the, the Sopranos or whatever. So so what happens is everything you make because it's craft service, and you're not in a hurry, you're not in mass producing, making burgers or thing or something like that. Uh, I end up, you know, touching a lot of things. And this is before COVID, so I don't know what they do put the gloves. I mean, I don't know about making food with the with gloves on. That don't make no sense to me. You wash your hands, get the thing there, and you know, you do what you do. So, so I use my hands, but what I'm doing is I'm giving love to everything I touch. You see, pure energy, love, like that. Now let me define love. Um, see, for me. There's this thing, I guess, you know, you, the, you say uh, God is love. So, I have this, I've, I've talked about this before. Like for me, uh, everybody, you know, we're all connected, but we're connected through this force. It's like when you were born, um, when you're a little bit of baby and you first came out, what happens, your first sound that you make, nobody knows what you, what you, nobody knows what the sound is. You know, the doctors can't interpret it, your mama can't interpret it, whoever's in the, you know, the daddy's there, if you have a home birth, it doesn't matter, in the water birth. Then nobody knows what you're saying when you have this, that first sound. Now, I, because I'm an audio dramatist, I gotta make up a story <laughs> about that. So, I say that you come down, and your first sound, you're basically announcing, well, it's like you are announcing the world here, but you're also announce it to the creator that brought you here, that, that brought you through, or, you know, suggested you, you come on down. You're saying, hey, I made it, thanks a lot. You know, I had a, it, was nice, it was nice warm water in there like that. Uh, looks like the mama's okay. Uh, but, you know, I'm glad I made it. And uh, I'll see you, you know, whenever we finish our little uh, mission or little uh, meanderings on the planet. But then God says, uh, Hey, I'm, I will kill them. But then again, you see, the creators and everything, including mosquitoes, so I shouldn't be killing anything because then you're killing a part of, uh, of the creator. And, eh, you know, because we're all connected, so you're killing a part of, of creation. That's not good. Uh, that's why you got to be watching what you eat. I mean, I'm, I'm really a, I'm more of a pescatarian, but... I will eat meat every once in a while, every once, every, every once a week, depending on where I am. Certainly not the states, not from the supermarket, because those things, those people are crazy. Okay, so then I I will uh, take the, when I have to crush the thing, I'll take it and I'll try not put any more seeds in there. And I'll squeeze the uh, lime, usually it's lime or lemon or lime. I'll put that in, oh, there's a seed, there's a seed in the, uh, what do you call that, in the cucumber, there's another seed, which um, which now has the, the black salt on it, so that's what I'm doing. I don't have to be all, I have plenty of things. Oh, by the way, when I do, first thing that I do when I wake up, when I have that clover in my mouth, then before I come and do this, usually I take a pinch of a flake salt and put it on my tongue. Let that dissolve. I didn't do it this morning. Let that dissolve. It's this year. And uh, so in that morning, I'm getting that real salt up. See? Partial see? See? Um, into my body. It's supposed to help with your blood pressure. I don't know, it don't hurt. A lot of things that I do, I find, you know, even before the internet, I was, since the 80s, I've been like health conscious. Uh, the, when I first uh, I first hung out, took two years with uh, uh, Dr. John Moore, Johnny Moore, uh, the, the hobo herbalist out of New York. And he was, he was wonderful. In fact, he, he became, uh, he came to No More Radio, my radio program. And, at WBI in New York, he was the herbologist for the um, for the program. So every once in a while, maybe once a month, sometimes soon, depending on what's happening, he would come up. had a had a huge staff. I don't know, 14, 17 people rotating out, poets and historians and health people like that. 
Okay, so that's, and I keep on going. So it's going to have a lot of uh, uh, lemon uh, juice in it. And see now, see this lemon juice getting all on my hands, so my hands are clean and everything like that. So basically, the love is cascading <laughs> over me. Love and sweat, I guess you might say. See now, with the with the with the uh, convenience of that metal thing, question like that. But then, then I'm mixing the metal in with the, uh, you know, it's not coming straight from me. It's coming through the metal, which is what you process. When they process stuff, you know, when they oh, here's a, See, when they process stuff, think about it. Between you and the, and the final thing, they're putting machines and you know metal and I mean I'm not against metal. I'm a child of a loon, so you know it's like iron metal, so it's not bad. But when that that machine and all that stuff, I don't know that it shouldn't be anything between you and anything between the love that you're giving and you're sharing with the rest, including the animal. It shouldn't anything be between them. And uh, actually, we used to. I'm a child of the of the. I guess you said. Well, I was born in 1950. My birthday's like I said, gonna be. Oh, I'm be. I'm gonna be 40. 40. I'm gonna be 74 tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, so I came of age, if you want to put that, the Black Arts Movement, you know, Black Power Movement, stuff like that. So I've been in, like, cause I've been in theater since 1967, even before then, doing stuff. Anyway. And uh, we used to have the same back then for, for the Black Power Movement, because uh, you know, overthrow the system and stuff like that. And it was, it was, if the white man touched it, leave it alone. Now, admittedly, the 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 it really is about you know, don't mess with the with with, with white women. You know, people, the black people just love black men. Whoever they just love white women, right? Even ever these days, even white women, even uh, black women, you know, go, I don't know, follow behind. Uh, white, well, I don't get into politics. Anyway, what the point is, so I've updated the thing because I'm not into this. I shouldn't be not into this, but I only use the race thing for, for explanation purposes only. Look at that, little that. It's going to be a lot of. It's going to be tough. Um, so, anyway, the, 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 we, I changed this day. I said, instead of saying if the white man touched it, you know, basically, if the man touched it or. If it's been processed, which means the white man touched because he made the machines that do do all those bad things and then you know the pesticide and all that stuff. So if the if the system is doing it, then stay away from it. In other words, if it's processed, stay away from it. So I even this much of papaya I'll give to the animals. Then of course I got the papaya seeds in here. Yeah, I'll use the papaya seeds. Then of course I cut skin of the papaya off. That's why I'm not too concerned when I when I'm rinsing when I'm using the uh, what do you call that? The uh, baking soda to get rid of all the pesticides that they spray on everything. Uh, because I usually cut all the skins off. Of course you can't do that with like grapes, seeded grapes and stuff like that, but then you gotta really soak it and other things, you know. So so I could get that stuff off. But like I said, once you once you're starting working with this stuff, what happens is you're thinking. I'm talking now, but you know you're thinking, you're meditating on things, and you're you're giving out love. You're putting love, your vibration, into your food. There you go. See, it's ready. Do it like this, and I'm actually going to now. Usually, I might cut this one. So then you have. Let me show you what you have. Not that many, this is all right. So you have the papaya seeds, so you have the papaya seeds. And I'll leave it there. So then what I'll do is I'll cut this to smaller cubes, pieces like that. Again, every time you're touching and you're whatever, you're transferring your energy, your, your love to this thing. And your love is basically, like I said, when, 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 when you was a little bitty baby and you, and, and you was, you came in and you told uh, your creator, hey, I made it through. You, I, here's what I believe. The creator said, oh, that's nice. He said, well, look, I need you to do me a solid. I said, well, what was that? I'd do anything for you, man. This was, this, was a good, this was a good trip, you know? I mean, out here in this little elements here, but I think we'll be all right. He said, yeah, yeah, you're going to be all right. Well, look, as you can see, or as you know, you got the limbs and you got the, you can, 
you can verbalize and stuff like that. You know, I, I don't have that capacity, you know. I can't be moving around like that. And, and I can't be talking like that, you know. I'm sending you these waves, you know, we're talking like we're talking right now, sound and vibration. But uh, here's what I'd like to do. Let me hitch a ride with you, you know. I'll hang with you, you know. Every once in a while, you know, whisper in your ear or what you'll hear. You hear the vibration. And then, you know, so if something's going to happen, I can warn you if you're receptive. Sometimes, you know, your little brain, I do mean little, will get in the way. And you're going to mess things up. But don't worry. I'm going to, you know, figure out things, how to, you know, do it right for you. Okay. So then, so I have this and I put that in that little mix. Usually what I do is I don't go, I make sure whatever I'm making in this, this breaking my fast. This um, eating my water in the morning. Eating water just refers to the you, know, you get your what's it, what is the yaki says H three O two H three O two yeah. Uh, so you're getting your water through that. That's your hydration. You don't need the, the regular unless you're using spring water. Let me cut this straight. Unless, you, unless you're using spring water or uh, now I'm cutting the watermelon or coconut water, which I will. That's another thing I like about India. They have coconuts right off the tree, so you know, hey, this is right. Uh, and it's kind of dumb, because remember, all this water is tap water, whatever they, again, they, they, they bottle the water through their machine, and they, and they, uh, they put it in plastic, and the plastic goes, uh, it's a mess, anyway. So, I stay away from that kind of water. In fact, I have, I'll show you later, I have a container that I, when I do get the spring water, I put it in, um, uh, and copper, use a copper, a drink out of a copper thingy there. So now I'm cutting the watermelon, the seeded watermelon. That's the other thing, man. They take, they, they alter the stuff in such a way, not only they spray, but they alter it in such a way that it's not good for you. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. So I have that, now this watermelon, because I had, yesterday was watermelon day, so I have a little bit left, so I'm going to put that in with here. But before I do that, so you just like that. I'm actually going to, I should have put these prunes in earlier. I have the end of, end of my, I, every once in a while I put prunes in this, this mixture in the morning. So I have some, the end of the prunes here, so I'm going to use the prunes in there too. Whatever. Where the prunes that honey but Oh, no more? Oh, like I had a lot. No. Um, there are only two prunes, so I'll cut them. Cut it in half. Oh, there's another little piece there. A half. So now I have five pieces of prune. I work by numbers. So my numbers are, well, 7, 3, 50. Well, July 3rd, 19th. So 3 is one of my numbers. 5 is one of my numbers. 7 is one of my numbers. And uh, uh, so I cut that into five pieces. Why? <laughs> it don't hurt. So, 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 so the creator said, yeah, I want to hit your ride. And, uh, you know, I'll give you warnings, of course, you know, you, you sometimes you can take them, I hope you will take them. A lot of times, you don't really want to walk by faith, like they say, you you want to walk by what you see, what you can analyze, and that's all right, but you do that at, at your own risk, right? Or say our own risk. So basically, God is in, uh, God, if you want to say that, or whatever, whatever you call him, the creator, um, I prefer to use my American Indian thing, um, and just say the great spirit. So the great spirit is with you. Now here's what I'm gonna do here. Hey, you know Russia's around. You know the Russia's colors of uh, uh, white, blue, white, blue, and red, right? So this is like a Russian knife. Sorry, they take it. They're they're doing stuff. A lot of stuff happening in the plant. Should pay attention. Okay, so then I take my mixture. Oh, I got something there. Take my mixture, which is like I say, coconut water, goji berries, whatever. And I just take some of those berries out to, I gave my big spoon away, three, let me go, I can go seven, I can go nine, I can go 12, all right, four, five, let's go seven. I'm trying to get a lot of berries out, these, these are raisins, six. Seven, a lot of raisins. Okay, so this will be later on, I think. 
drink the drink the coconut coconut water. Infuse coconut water. We're going today. So that's on there like that. Then I will take and uh, cut the watermelon on there too. So that's what happens. So that's so you go through life, and this it's, it's, it's God, God created, great spirit is in you. But everybody has God created great spirit in them, and they're all connected. So for instance, and like I said, they say God is love. I'm using the, I'm using the, the uh, Christian or the English terms. I could do this kind of. I'll talk about English in this in a little while, maybe if I remember. And so, what happens if I say to you, "Let me go back. Let me tell you something else." Um, I was in graduate school for for, play, for playwriting at the school of whatever. Um, only at, at uh, Mason Grove School of the Arts. When I first came, it was just a school of performing arts, but then they renamed it to this Mason Grove style. Uh, anyway, this is part of the Rutgers, the Rutgers University system in um, the, the Brunswick was in New Jersey, but you know the, the Brunswick area, and it's across from the Douglas campus. This the school. So I was there when they first opened up. That's when I went. I took the. I had my playwriting, and I didn't take the the, the masters. But that's a whole other story. That I'm not going to tell you right now. So. Um, why did I bring that up? Um, I, no, I forgot why I brought that up. Okay. So, oh, oh, so okay. Um, so I was talking about God. So oh yeah. So so um, if if God is love, right? Then oh yeah, that's what. When we was doing this course, right? Um, uh, you know, graduate students. Um, so this this, 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 you know, this class is small, like you know, under twelve people, whatever it is nine people, whatever it is like that. So we had this instructor one time, she worked for the Village Voice. I think her name Eileen Blumenthal. She was a critic for the Village Voice. They hired her, I don't know what she was doing. I guess they were doing some um, theater theory or something like that. Uh, so anyway, she had this question. I guess she thought she was being profound. She had an assignment. No, 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 assignment. We were sitting in class, so she asked this question. How, what is love? How do you... How, how do you, you know, going, what, what is love to you like, going around? So now I have to say it this way because um, when I first came to the theater at Negro Ensemble Company, I had written them a letter and they wrote back, 67. They said, well, there's no classes right now. There's nothing to do right now. But as soon as we have a class, open up, we'll call you. And so, strangely enough, I was like, no, I must have been 16 when I wrote the letter. Yeah, I was 16 at the time. So 17 came around, and I, uh, and, I and, and Ron Mack sent me back a, a, a hey, have a class open up. I think it was November. Come on down. So I did. <laughs> down St. Mark's Place. I'm from the South Bronx. You know, project kid. Actually, the likelihood of me, well, not me, any project kid writing a letter back then, it's like, hmm, kind of interesting. I guess we did write letters back then, but, you know, from the ghetto. You know, so I was one. I was like the second youngest person in the class, and most of these people were like solidly, they're black people, but solidly, I don't want to say boule, but solidly, you know, middle class, you know, aspiring you know, people, uh, like that. So, so I'm really the only ghetto kid. Now, if you, saw, <laughs> I'll show you how ghetto I am back then. Well, I was like whatever. I'm with the downtrodden. <laughs> you know the movie Fame, you know, uh, Le the character Leroy, the dancer, right? You know how he comes in off the street with a rabbit, and he doesn't wear tights, you know, he's got he's to wear the, 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 you know, the, the, the pants, you know, the regular, you know, like this, the, the, the regular pants. Because he ain't wearing no tights like that. I was like that, you know what I mean? So, you know, Lewis Johnson, who was our dance teacher, you know, he would say something. I said, "Are you doing that right there?" As the Negro Ensemble Company was an interesting uh, experiment for me. Uh, so anyway, uh, so I brought that up. Oh, so she said, "You know what is love?" So everybody's going to run into what they say, "Love, love." When she came to me, I said, "Look, where I come from, we don't be talking about I love you." This is back in the '60s, right? Whatever. I know now. You know, well, well, anyway, and then we don't say love you, but what we will say is we say, "I got your back." Basically means, well, I got your back. 
you know, what, what is love? If you, 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 you know, like the musicians said, like, you'll die for your for your bandmate. You know, it's kind of interesting because that has evolved. Is you hear? Um, I noticed it like not the seventies, more more than the nineties. You know, sports people say, "I got your back." You know, it came from the came from well, like everything it came from black people, right? So to say, "I got your back" is uh, is is. It's more accurate, you know what I mean? That what does love mean? That's like I got a four-letter word for you, blah blah blah. Anyway, that's not the point. So that's what that's like we voted for a long time. But now I'm thinking, hold on a second. But now I'm thinking, if I say I can say, I can say I love you now, but for me, you hear I love you, then you can take that you want. What what I'm saying to you, if God is love, I love is God. Then when I say I love you, I'm basically saying I got you, I got you. Now in the, in the South African context, it's called Ubuntu. It's like I see you, you and me. This is this whole thing is like they do. So if I got you, this means basically I'm acknowledging the God in you, because the God in you is the God in me. You got that? So when you hear me say I love you. You think I'm saying I love you like in the context of your European context, but I'm actually saying in the, I guess it would be the Anthony context, which is, that's the way I think. But it's it's in my context, which means that I got you, and that that shift in my head. I don't say that to you, but that I don't explain this to everybody. I'm explaining it to you, but that shift in your head is very interesting. Okay, so then so I take all then I'm I'm finished with this stuff and I gotta take it over to where I eat this at, and usually I, I take a picture like I said my ingredients, then I do this, and then I go over there, and I use the camera, and I explain how I did everything, and then I will uh, 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 take another picture of how it, the end looks like that, and then I will, um, then I will eat, and I post that, so if you, those people who have seen that, I know that, let me check this and put this, so that's what I do. <laughs> And that's how the morning thing goes. Now I'm going to actually take those things. Okay, now I got to run over here. I got to take the camera too. I'll carry everything. Okay, we're moving. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, um, I'm, I've been doing that stuff, and I'm going to take that. I'm going to make a, a 18 month calendar or some kind of book or something like that. That really, I'll put this here. Put this someplace. That really. Uh, my writing. This is this is a song I made up. Let me do let me do the song for you. The song I made up. So because of my healing, when it's going to be uh, done right. Oh, let me. This second, I got a light. I got to put this. Let me on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stays over there. Oh, okay. See now in the morning when I do this thing. See this 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 from yesterday. This is a, a, a incense cone holder here like that. Oh, come on, hold on. When I got the cones, like I say this is the last day, I got three more cones left. I guess I will do something with them. It's getting hot, I could put the fan up a little bit more. It's hot here in India. And I came with the hottest season, which doesn't bother me. I like the heat like that. I'll put the fan a little bit higher. A little bit higher with the fan. Okay. So now I'll take this incense here. Got my incense. This is a citronella, keeps the mosquitoes away, but I have a whole lot of different kinds of incense. Uh, rosemary, like that. Oh, and this uh, thing, oh, you didn't see it, you don't see it. Let me move this around so you can see. This flame in here. This from last night, I, do, uh, I have a candle that has a, and, then, and I, oh, you gotta see this. Some light in the cone here.
I eat, when I eat, I make sure there's smoke going around because I don't want the, any spirits to jump into jump into me when I'm when I'm eating. Oh, by the way, we hold on, I gotta my glasses up a little. Uh, so then I. So I do it like that. So the cone is doing its thing. Coming out. Cover it up. I'm leaving that hitch. I'm leaving a bunch of stuff here. So that's it. That's uh, doing this wafting its thing. This is uh, magnesium for later after the meal. Uh, and let me move this. Move this over here. So, got that going. So let me show you what I do. Oh, by the way, I sleep. I showed this one time before. I sleep on a, let me, can I turn this around? Let me turn this around for a second so you can see. See, I sleep, this is the bed I sleep on, like here. But uh, somewhere in the middle of the night, whatever, I wake up and I put the thing on the floor, right? Because I sleep on a towel. See, it's sort of dirty right now. Uh, and I'll move this out the way. I sleep on the towel, but then, but this is a yoga mat there. So the yoga mat goes over here, everything like that. So I'm sleeping on that, and then somewhere when I wake up, I put it down. So, so then I, I lay down and I put my my feet up on the thing like that. So whatever I'm doing, so I'm, I'm packing as you see, because I'll be I'll be leaving. This is, this is my uh, oh, this is my symbol. I have a symbol. It's, it's from the from the Akan uh, people, uh, and it, the meaning is a wisdom knot. That's my symbol. Well, this is uh, the Kumba people, the, the narrative people, you know, middle class, you know, academia people like that. I like that. This, this, I like. I got this when they first when they first started. So I sort of like this, uh, this kind of this, this hoodie is very light, whatever have you. So I put my my own symbol on it, like that. It's on a, on a no, don't worry about it. But you'll see some other time. I bought some uh, cashews to travel with. Anyway, so I'm packing. Right, it's a lot of material. Uh, linen and uh, for my wife and oh, no I could do a poster with that before um, okay let, let me not stay with that let's let's go back over here so this morning I was doing some finishing up my writing that's what I wanted to tell you oh here's the song I had made up a long time ago I said when this thing gets healed it didn't get healed quite well I was going to sing this song so then, oh happy day oh happy day when Horace went and fix my face <laughs> when Horace went and fixed my face. Hallelujah, Hare Krishna. Thank, <laughs> thank, uh, thank Jahweh. Uh, uh, what's a, a bunch of people? And, oh, thank, thank, oh, thank, uh, especially Giuseppe, Maria, rather, um, uh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh meaning Jesus, like, thank Jesus, uh, um, Maria, Giuseppe, and the donkey. I say thank God, praise Alofi. Right, so I would I say thank love. Uh, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Horace made me whole in his faith, in his grace. Such a happy, happy day. It's a song. Well, I don't know how to sing it, but I do it like that. So, that's the song. This is my journal that I've been writing in journal there and at the end of the journal the, somewhere I have my my consabas I've been writing consabas these are the 49 word 49 word poems uh, seven words to a line uh, seven lines of course to, to the poem uh, no word in the line more than um, more than seven letters except for proper nouns so I did that but what I do with that is I write um, see it ends up there but what I do is I write the first draft happens in this book here. This is my writing book. I was doing a creative writing book. And uh, when I'm doing the thing, in the back of the book, I would do the draft. See, I would do a draft here in pencil. See, and that's why you have all this, well, not all that there, all this correction and scribbling like that. Then I would take it and I would uh, put it in the book like that. And then, since I'm writing, this is a, oh boy, let me try to, 
Let me put this down so I can go through it with you. I'm moving over here. Come on. So this book here. See, I got this one. Got a, uh, a book to write, and I started writing it. It's my 52 days before my birthday. This is a crucial period. So I turn it around. I'm not yet. So anyway, so I used this this year. I went and started writing. So each day I would write two or three or four or even more pages in this book of this dialogue. It's a dialogue with myself, and uh, it's a dialogue with myself. That's what it is. It's a dialogue with myself. And uh, myself had have, had have, uh, basically. Oh, oh! I just knocked this thing over. Oh, don't! Oof, 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 oof. Oh, oh! Let's burn that thing. Ooh, this is a catastrophe. Oh, quarter in time. Fabric. Oh, it's not good. Okay. So um, let me move this over here. I don't have that anymore. So there's like uh, aspects of myself. Some workers are coming because they're, they're building a wall over there. Anyway, these aspects of myself, so the main person is being me, but then they have 12 aspects of myself that I've been writing. So one is Anthony J is the consciousness, right? T from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet. He's the frankly speaking person. He's the one that curses. Uh, Sloan is the leader that makes the final decisions. Just the, well, See, my name, Anthony Sloan, means Anthony means the Anglo root meaning that is incomparable. And Sloan, the last name, uh, means warrior in the Anglo sense. Oh, I forgot. Anthony J is a consciousness, uh, conscious character. Uh, A.J. Sloan is the, um, is the fact checker. Anthony J. Sloan is the formal writer, so write, I want to write plays and stuff like that. Anthony J.T. Sloan is my fraternity uh, name for my, as, as a fraternity brother. Uh, uh, Tony Sloan uh, is when I first started writing poetry, that's the name I used, Tony Sloan, the first poet. He's a, really a wordsmith. I'm not really a poet as much as I'm a wordsmith uh, because I started writing poetry because I couldn't spell. <laughs> but that's a great word. Then later on, a couple of years after that, actually when I got to Livingston, I guess, well, a couple of years after that, I went and did Tony Sloan 1971 because that's the political poet more conscious, would ever been conscious, but just really conscious. And that's when I had my, my traveling groups. I had two poetry groups in, in college that we travel around. Went to the original New York Post Cafe on 6th Street over there in the Lower East Side. Um, um, then you have Lahote. Lahote doesn't appear. It's my African. In other words, when you get to Africa, everybody said, oh, let me give you an African name. They're going to make some name up there. I said, look, whatever it means a uh, warrior or incomparable warrior, that's my name in your language. You know? So in the Shona, not, not Shona, in the uh, uh, Kosa, um What's a Sutu, uh, Sutu uh, context? It would be Lhote. So Lhote means warrior. If, if, he's on, if, if Lhote is on your side, then he's your greatest you know, uh, warrior. If, it's, if you're the enemy, then, well, guess what? You know, your, your fiercest enemy. So that's there. Then you have Anthony John, which is travel. That's because when you travel, if you look at your passport, you know, they have your, your last name up there, but then, then they have your. your First name, and if you have a middle name, that so, so when they call you, they say Anthony John. <laughs> That's what they'll say. So Anthony John is a traveler. Uh, brother Anthony Sloan is the teacher sensei. I consider more of a, a, a teacher. A sensei is just a teacher who does, who demonstrates by doing. Um, but uh, like when I was teaching at, at university, when I teach, when I was teaching at university, whatever. And when I'm in a the community, they call me Brother Sloan, they call me Brother Anthony, like that. Uh, and then, then remember, I have these two poetry things, but they morph. Because I know it, I don't use uh, Tony Sloan or whatever. Uh, that that that's the kind of white people. You know, when I first came to uh, into theater, they would they would say, "What's your name?" Oh, Anthony Sloan. Because I always I grew up Anthony. I didn't have an, I didn't have a nickname in the, in, the, in the projects. You know, what I mean, everybody says Anthony. You know, like that. My brother. I guess my family is the only family they use. We use the name. Anyway, so they would say, "Oh, Tony, right?" And they would say, "No, don't say why." But actually, in, in the theater context, Tony Sloan rings off your thing, so it's all right. But I don't use that. Uh, and then, then, so I morphed it to poetry. It says the poet, and then with the running together, the, then, then the big P, uh, and then I sign it. You just sign an Anthony. That's the, the current poet thing. So whenever I do a poetry now, I use it. That's how I sign it. And uh, and talk about the, then, then I have this closing prayer. 
Thank love. Remember that love is, 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 is a great spirit. Praise the Lofi, right? May Shiva continue to embody, right? And the, the last one, because in the, in, the, in the Indian context, it would be Shiva, well, I think. And then for the, the Rastafarians, it's like Ja Rastafari. So a lot of times, when I, I, I pray all the time. I do the, I do the uh, what do you call that? The uh, Bar Bali, think you give thanks and praises. So when you, people, when they, they, say, they claim they're praying, they're not really praying. They, what they're doing is they're petitioning. And I remember there's this, there was this, uh, we we're, were heard a flax song way back in the day, maybe it was the first album, the second album. It sounds like a God cannot be petitioned. Anyway, so usually people say, I want to, I need a call, whatever. They're petitioning. They're not really praying. Right? Praying is like you give thanks and praise. So if something happens, good, bad, and different, you say, you know, I say, thank love, praise Alofi. Alofi is a, is a Yoruba context because I work a lot with the Yoruba. Don't, don't worry about it. It's more African. So it's like European. This is African to me, and that's what it is. And Jai Rastafari, this is interesting because um, if wherever you go on the planet, oh, now I can turn this back around. Whatever you, wherever you, wherever you go on the planet, uh, there's always a, a, a Chinese <laughs> connection, right? Uh, so China is always represented, right? Uh, but also another community that's all all over the planet is the Rastas. Don't be sleeping on the Rastas. Every place I go, I hook up with the Rastas. That's one of her. Well, I guess maybe, uh, but because they are in the know. You know, they're my people, you know, like that. So, anyway, so, oh, so, so, I, uh, so, so the last poem I wrote, because I did this series here, uh, uh, the Yatra, uh, uh, this, uh, um, this uh, cafe, that, um, they, they had the open mic on, um, on Saturday. I found it. So I started to do, uh, I started to do the Consalves, which is that boy and I were poem. There, because it's short, it's open mic. And I usually when I do a kusava, you know, I would only do a special occasion. Somebody passed, you know, and they were going to end, and like that. But I wouldn't do a lot of it. But this time I got to do it like every week. I would do a kusava. The kusava I won't get to because I want to give. Don't worry about it. You, you know, you know what. Uh, uh, so anyway, so I've I've been doing the kusava like, and I, I start actually I started when I first came there. Uh, I did a poem because of the whole Gaza thing was on, so I did, did a Kosava towards Gaza. This is an interesting one because, I don't know, I'm not going to read it. Should I read it to you? Uh, it's, 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 on, it's, it's, it's on the Instagram someplace, so you have to look it up, right? And then, then I knew that um, Africa Day was coming. So I asked him, I asked the guy, I said, hey, look, I got an idea. Africa Day is coming, so I'm gonna do, I, want, I want to do a poem from that tradition, a Henry Dumas poem, Root Song. That root song, you, you may or may not know, it's a great, great poem, it's one of my favorite poems. But, um, uh, but you may know it from the Black Panther comics, the one that Tahash, Tanishi, whatever, the coach guy, who had well, with, 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 with the sister, whatever, well, they used uh, part of root song in that, in that comic, in that first, first thing, so you can know it from there. And, uh, and I know Loretta, in fact, Loretta, oh, I did something really interesting. I got Loretta, uh, Loretta never has read Henry's work, this is Widow, out loud. But a few years ago, I was visiting her, and I got her, and we did root songs. She did a, a stanza, I did a stanza, and we did root songs. So officially, uh, Loretta actually read our root song, and uh, it's, on, it's on my YouTube channel. Go find it if you wish. Anyway, so, so then, so, so, uh, so we did root song for Africa Day. You know, May 25th, Africa Day was a Saturday. But then the next week, I said, oh, this is a good idea, because he interpreted it in Tamil, right? So he did the Tamil interpretation. So I would do a stanza or a line, whatever. i do a stanza, and he would do it in Tamil, because we had a Tamil audience and things for us like that. Then I got, that's just a good idea. So the next week, since we're in Oroville, you did the whole thing with the mother, the person who, who inspired, who, who thought up Oroville and had it built. Um, so I did uh, Mother Speaks Oroville, because it, 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 was, it, it was about, about Oroville, like that. So, and Sri Aurobindo, Sri Aurobindo, Auroville is named after Sri Aurobindo, who was this uh, poet, uh, guru, whatever down here, all the work is going to start with some of these oh well. Uh, and then the next week, uh, since there's a lot of children around, I did The Mighty Ones with a Kuntava for the children, and then I did Kuntava uh, for, um, I'm going to close the door because of the noise, maybe I wouldn't. Come back, uh, Paras. Uh, uh, yeah, come back, Barat, and it's about the uh, 
said the India, the, 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 or talk to the same, the first name for India wasn't India, but it was, uh, you know how white people come, they change everything. So I wrote, I wrote a thing about them. And then, because there's, there's a lot of nature happening around here, I wrote a consabra, it's called Come, oh, let's, let's, let's put some like that. Then I wrote a consabra, next one I wrote last week, was Baying Not at the Moon. And it's about creatures and stuff like that. And so I wrote, wrote that one. See, it's so inspired by what's going on, right? But then I said, okay, I'm going back. So I did this cassava, which is, um, which, like I said, what I do is I write them in the, in the thing. I write them, uh, I write them and correct it. So the first time. write and make corrections, right? And then I, uh, and then what I do is I write it in the in the book, right? And then I put it on in the notes on my phone, right? And uh, what else do I do? Oh yeah, that's that's what I do. And then I use it for this context. What I would do is I would read it like practice because I'm performing it on Saturday. I would usually finish the poem by Thursday. I started like on Monday or Tuesday. I do the revision by Thursday like that. Okay. So then what I would do, even as I did that, then what I would do is um, this exercise that I was doing, I was writing 52 days, I would write something every 52 days, and I timed so that uh, I realized when I was coming to the end, oh, so my last entries, I went and did this whole, like on page 90, and then the 94th poem that I did, uh, it doesn't go by the days, it's like, like some days would have three, three entries, some days have one entry, some days have two, whatever it is like that. So when I got to page 94, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, the book is running out. Right? So I went back, and I, from 1970, when I was in, uh, when I uh, joined the Air Force, I started writing, like, re re recounting what happened from 1970 to 1975. Did I start in 70? Yeah, I started in 70. Then I went from 75 to 80, recounting stuff that happened there. They're, they're talking to me, you know, my, my stuff is talking to each other. And then 1980, 1985, 1985 to 1990, 1990, 1995, 1995 to 2000, then from 2000 to 2005, then uh, finally from 2005 to 2010. That's where, no, 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 2010, I'm still working on that. There's a problem right there. No, no, I didn't, I didn't. Okay. Then 2010 to 2015, this is all the place I've been, I'm writing like that. In 2015-2020, I stopped there, uh, that's the Nabaza, because that's where I ended up now, the reason, not the reason, but the thing I'm in the Nabaza, because it's a, it's a uh, what do you call that, it's a base for me, you see, and all my, the, 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 the tasking I'm doing in Nabaza is very important. Uh, the, um, like I said, I'm an audio dramatist, and I have to have a, a, a resident company. When I was at BAI, my resident company was Creative Unity. Creative Unity, like I trained them in radio, and they became my the basic company for my for all the audio dramas I did at you know at, in New York, right? Uh, then then I traveled and I did uh, when I got to uh, I went all over a bunch of places in the world. And I would go to a community radio stations and uh, you do audio dramas, sort of organize and recruit people in station like that. Like well, anyway, that's what I did. Um, and then when I got finally got to South Africa, uh, well, I guess now it's 24 years ago. <laughs> oh joy! No, not twenty-four. I got there in two thousand three. Okay, twenty, twenty-one years ago, two thousand three. Uh, I got I got to South Africa because I was invited to do a workshop there, and um, so I did there. And I had most of my life I never spent more than three years in any one location. But I looked up and all of a sudden I was like ten years in Cape Town. What? I had to get out of it anyway. So in there, uh, I've worked in all kinds of communities. Like uh, I lived in, well, all kinds of communities. I worked in uh, uh, did audio drama and organized groups in all the communities, like Danoon and Philippi and, and Langa and you know, whatever, um, like that. And so, uh, uh, and also when I worked with uh, Pan African Space Station. That was a really interesting project. And I taught at University. I did stuff there. And so, uh, and then, so then, so so two. 2015, some, 2000, well, that's what I thought, uh, 2014, well, the first 2000, I came to the Eastern Cape. So I've been in Eastern Cape 
from 2000, yeah, for, I guess 10 years, uh, 2014, for 10 years in the Eastern Cape, uh, finally solidifying who I am now. It took me like eight years to really get things going the way I should. Things, you want to do something worthwhile, it's going to take time. And so now I have, uh, we have a theater. It just, I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen it in a couple of days. Then the theater that was built, Dr. T.C. and that crew, uh, in, in the village, the Tebalaza village, is next to Dibaza. Right there, I'm, uh, and I'm quite comfortable there when I say comfortable, because I now have a theater thing where I can create an audio drama unit and a bunch of other stuff I need to do. I'm going to have an a art gallery there and all the rest of stuff. Uh, I work with the, uh, with the senior citizens. The, 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 I call them the wisdoms, you know, the Baza Society for the Age, where I give them like a, a Qigong, you know, a movement classes in the morning, the Monday through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I do that there. And then I live in a, a village called Gubeva with my wife. So I'm, I'm quite happy where I am. So anyway, so as it comes to, the, I came and said, okay, this is the last, this is Tuesday. This is the last entry. And so what I usually do is I take, I put the Konsaba in the, uh, it's part of this whole whole thing, this bunch of Konsabas over there. So now, now it's documented all these places. Um, so I do it for you, know I'm gonna do it for you. I did the, the Konsaba, again, if you look if you're on, if you're on Instagram, uh, it's, uh, is it posted? Oh no, I didn't. Well, I, 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 ooh, I don't know. No, I didn't do it. Okay, I'll do it now for you. Oh man, I guess I. No, I'm not gonna close it because I got the window open anyway. Here we go. So I'm gonna read the Masaba. I'm gonna put my glasses on. The last one I did. This is the one that ends that ends the uh, the writing and it's the last Masaba I've done here for this round here in Oroville at Artist Cafe Open Mic. Okay, here we go. This Masaba. It's called, uh, it's called Warriors We Be. Now remember, I had those uh, actors, so, so get this whole thing, so it leads up, it, 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 they, they talk to each other, and then they, they lead up to this and cover. And actually, it's appropriate, because the poet ends the whole thing, and it ends with this, uh, Warriors We Be. And it's an autochthony consala. It's consala. K-W-A-N-S-A-B-A. It's out of the, 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 the tradition of the, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the African, the African, the, 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 the Rons, Karenga, you know, the created uh, holiday uh, between uh, Christmas and New Year's coming up pretty soon. Uh, when they first, anyway, that's what it comes out of that. The seven, the seven principles of, of Kwanzaa. That's the Kwanzaa. So it's, it's Kwanzaa. For, I say Kwanzaa, I just learned it like that. Here's the warriors we be. Got a little background music, but this is system building. Here we go. Remember, seven lines, seven words to a line like that. Here we go. Red clouds stood us down these decades, biding us in fierce warrior new time. For this, every to all combat phase. Freedom is our aluta mantra heard today. Towards this goal is what we pray. A prayer to lead us this way. Mind troop weapons for their course decay. Now, when I was when I delivered this, I was interested about the open mic, then I would go back and explain the poem. So, 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 so when you write, you write words, it's something different. But when you, you're saying it, there's, there's sounds, right? So I'm, I have to go through this thing like a, So Red Cloud, you know, Red Cloud, the, 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 the Lakota in, Indian, you know what I mean? He's the only, he's the only cat that beat up on the, um, uh, the U.S. Army and won, right? And diplomat. He had gone to Washington, D.C., and he saw what was going on. And he came back, he told us to look, stand, don't do anything. This is all, you know, because it's not, you know, you know you know, American Indians, they are. They got the, they connected. They, they haven't left the spiritual realm yet, you know. So, and I guess, I, on my maternal side, I'm, I'm a, a Mohawk. So, a, 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 my Gullah Geechee great-grandfather married a Mohawk Indian, so I have, well, don't worry about that part. So, um, so Red Cloud, that's who he is. He, uh, he stood us down and said, hey, don't do anything. For all these decades, remember, we were talking about the 18-whatever, like that. He told people, don't do anything, you're not going to beat them. Time will come. And now with, with the advent of the, of the birth of the white buffalo, oh, this is interesting. Anyway, 
biting us in fierce warrior new time. Biting us in fierce, so all this time he's germinating all this time, especially what you want to do in the, uh, what I call the American African tradition, you know, us Negroes, you know, want to go from, from the middle passage through, through slavery, antebellum, you know, Jim Crow, Sacred, all that kind of you know, lynching, all that stuff like that. But, so we, we became fierce, that forged us, we became fierce warriors, those fierce in preparation for this time, this new time, right? For this every to all combat phase. Now we're ready. Now we're supposed to be, we're in combat phase now. This is, we're in combat phase. We've had all these decades, Rex Tower said it's gonna come a time, now is the time, we're in combat phase. We, we, we forged ourselves, remember, American Africans, black people, whatever you want to call us, you know, uh, we're the only ones on the planet. You think about this. In the belly of the beast, we're outnumbered, but we kept on, we keep on fighting. We don't be running around, we just, you know, just oh, I need a break, let me run over to, to America and take advantage. No, no. We kept, we keep, and we keep on fighting. We keep on fighting. We don't stop. We warriors to the, to, to the inf. <laughs> and that's what makes, that's what makes American Africans different than everybody else on the planet. I'm in South Africa. Yeah, but you know, they fight apartheid and all this stuff. But you know, you outmun them your thing. But even you didn't win, right? You came to an armistice and, 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 and they planted a demon seed. Because even right now with South African um, elections, what's in there? The DA is in there. The colonizers, former colonizers, they really get their little wedge in there like that. So because you didn't have no bloodshed, we got the dogs, we got the lynchings or whatever. You had no bloodshed, you came to an armistice, you came to an agreement, now you keep on agreeing. So I'm curious to see what happens with that. And then, then, then the rest of Africa, you know, you have the stuff happening with Kenya, stuff is happening in Malawi, all over the place. You know, you have these, the, what, what, the, what the colonizer did, they created a buffer class. That buffer class was those people who aspired to be like the colonizer. Oh, I'm, I'm now going to be a, a, a colonizer, right? So you colonize your own people. I was listening to that guy in, in, in Kenya, the president, they were, they, they were having a press conference, well, he was talking to the press, or well, he was sitting down, they were having a and they were saying, well, what about these people that done? And then he went off into this neo-colonized, neo-colonial mentality, he was like, well, the, they destroyed property. What? We're talking about people, what's the matter with you? That boy got to go. Right, let me not say anything. But uh, Look, this is the time. I have this thing called a jump theory. It's like, you should be, everybody at the same time, whatever you're, if you're a liberator, let's put it that way, if, you are, if you're a warrior, then you should all jump up at the same time because when you jump up, you gotta land. When you land, everybody lands at the same time, it shakes everything. See, yeah, that's the point. Okay, I went off on that. This combat phase, right? Freedom is our Aluta mantra heard today. Now that's from Aluta Continua, which is the Portuguese thing for the struggle condition, continue. So I want to make that allusion in there. So, uh, so Aluta, um, struggle is our struggle is our struggle mantra heard today is what I'm trying to say what, what I am saying towards this goal is what we pray this is interesting the word here pray I use p-r-e-y so when you're when you're praying on something like a pray a bird of prey they're coming they're coming swooping and get you like you know hey the first most deadly bird is, is, is the falcon the falcon you know the falcon it's supposed to be the smartest bird because it's got to change terrain all the time. It's got to go from no, all the way up north in uh, North America, all the way down to South to Argentina and South America, all the way down. That's a lot of terrain. And moving so fast, it's got to constantly uh, adjust to what well, this food is going to be here, this or whatever it is. And it's interesting because, to me, um, let me put my little two cents in. I do, I mean, I've been, I, I move, I mean, I, I keep on moving, I have to change terrain all the time, I have different realities, and my, so my brain thinks a little bit different than people who are sedentary, let's put it that way. So, I use the bathroom analogy, so here, and here, you know, you have, let's move around, because I want to bore you all. So in here, you have, let me just put this, so this, the, 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 the bathroom here, the toilet, the, the whatever here, right here, you have, See, you have the bathroom, you have the, the, the floor like that, but this is a French kind of thing because you have the, like a, well, a boudet. So you have the sprayer right there. So when you use the toilet, you know, there's no toilet paper because you use the sprayer to clean, to, to wash your behind, like that. And I just love this. So and this, this is what should be. This is what a proper, uh, bath, well, I guess you could have a tub or whatever. 
But this, I really like this situation. So in here, I, you know, you go to the loo and whatever they have you. And I use this, this is my washing buckets, you know, and I wash my clothes like, uh, like that. Okay, so that's what I do here. Now, when I'm in Dumbaza, we have the outhouse, you know, it's like a, a toilet outside. So in Dumbaza, and they use toilet paper. I'm trying to get them to, to get a boudet there so we don't use toilet paper, whatever. Anyway, so that's outside. So, so it's a toilet outside the outhouse, right? When I'm in Gubevo, the village where I live with my wife, our, our house is out there, right? But uh, we use a bucket inside the house, right? The middle of the night, use a bucket, whatever, and that, like that. So I have three different realities of three different toilet realities in three different situations. And when, say, when I'm in Cape Town hanging with, 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 with my main man, Ian, right, he has the proper, you know, shower and the, the whole live in the middle class life, that kind of thing. And then when, when, okay, and then when, when I'm in, 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 in Chesapeake with my sister, again, you know, the whole middle class life. Right? But, but in these different realities, you, you, you think differently. I can't explain it. So anyway, so that's what that's about. So the prey, that's what I was talking about that. But, uh, a bird of prey. Then I say a prayer, that's praying that you'll, or a Y, a prayer to lead us this way. Now, I remember I told you before that praying is just giving thanks and praises, right? That's really, but, but people would not, but I'm using it in this context, when people, it's going to be like a prayer meaning, uh, uh, I won't say a begging, but a, 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 an incantation, I say incantation, to, to, for which way to go, and asking which way to go, right? Then, uh, this thing, mind troop weapons, mind troop weapons. Our weapons are not... See, remember the 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 the, the, the colonizers. They 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 sorry. They use uh boom 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 boom. That's all they know. Boom boom boom. They cut their war. Da 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 da. But the, the 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 thing that we have today, we have to use our mind. We are mind weapons. That's what that American Africans. Well, not all, but we know. That's what we do. We use our mind to defeat the enemy. So if you go out there and burn it, whatever, have you, yeah, you, our troops are doing that. Some troops are doing that. And some troops are doing whatever it is. But for, for the, 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 my troops, especially if you're older, you know, you know I, I did all the protests, you know, the horses coming and pinned up against the thing, you know, the, the, the whole, you know, protest, this one, down to D.C., with, with the, all that stuff. I did all that, went through all that. Look, I've been in the movement since 1964. Let me put it that way. Seriously, right? Other people have receipts. I have bona fides. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I have bona fides. People say, I got receipts. Yeah, they, uh, your receipts are nice. I got bona fides. I've been through it all. I, 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 all over the planet. Uh, my troop weapons for their, I put their, I always put, the, when I say them or their, I put them in quotes. Because the enemy. Force decay. They are forced decay. They're gonna, they're, they're rotting anyway. We're gonna force them a little bit more, like that. That's the error that we're in right now. That's what I'm dedicated to. My whole thing is really, if you want to look at it this way, um, I've been doing a lot of whole things in my life. Where it was like I won't give it to to family matters, but um, I think, and I've come to this. I think it's this. Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. has this whole thing with, with um, white, racism, white supremacy, right? I call it, I, I call it it's a system, he called it a system of, of racism, which is white supremacy. I've changed that, I, I'm, I should say this, I'm sort of like an academic, a, a street academic. When someone was described me as, a, oh, you're like a mechanic with a, with a, uh, with a pocket addiction, addition of, a, of a, a Socrates in his back pocket. So I'm, I know academia, I've been to academia, went to graduate school twice, don't worry about why I didn't take a degree, anything like that. So I know how to research and, and that, and that, and that, I know how to footnotes, I know how to write academically, blah, blah, blah. I don't use it, well, I do. But what in academia, what you're supposed to do, you have or whatever you have, and you, and you read some person from, you know, wherever they're from, right? Then you're supposed to fill in the gaps. The problem with academia is that because they come, they, they usually are based in a European or that Aristotelian model, let's put it that way. Uh, even, even if they're doing the research and they go back to, to you know, you, you got your shake after the after whatever have you, they're still coming from that sort of 
perspective. And remember, before you had academia, you had or, or you had an oral tradition, oration. You had the oral tradition, so you learned a lot of stuff through passed down from you know generation to generation to generation, not writing the stuff down. I mean, we're we're in Tamanadu right now. Well, the Tamil is the first language that they not only spoken, but they actually wrote. You know, wrote a big language, the first language on the planet. You say, well, the sense, so Sanskrit, the whole look. Believe me on this, okay? Don't worry about anything else. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's other languages, like um, I mean, again, in in, uh, in South Africa, you know, you had my, my wife. She has descent. She has one side. She has Zulu, and the other side, she has the the uh, San people, the the um, Kosan people. You know what I mean? And the, and they're the ones with, the, with a lot of clicks, click, click, you know, the little guys, you know, with the with the bow, they hunt with the bow and arrow. The, think of Madiba, the way he looked. That's where they looked, right? Just, just uh, he was tall, you know. So anyway, they they they'll hunt they'll hunt a they'll hunt a, a prey down for days so the prey gets tired and come back with the meat. Those those cats, they're fierce. But anyway, those are the first people on the planet. When I say first people, I mean after you come from Lake Victoria, uh, things got all messed up and they came down to uh, South Africa, and mainly uh, in the Muscle Bay area. In Muscle Bay, the temperatures the same all year round, right? So they survived and then they went back out. But uh, I won't get into the whole thing. I, I, don't worry about that stuff. Anyway, so, so I changed, not changed, but I enhanced it, or I did the academic work. So it's a system, remember, it's a system, and she says racist white supremacy. It's a system of Anglo racist white supremacy. It's very important. So what that means is that, oh, I wish I could draw it for you. Anglo, so you have sisters, you have to know it's a system. The Anglo there is a, say, an adjective, if you want to say, say it like that. Uh, racist white supremacy. Now, everybody says, get some onto that, whatever it is. I say the Anglo is in there because it's like a, it's, it's like if you, if you, back in the day when you had stamps, you know that if you got a stamp from the UK, it didn't, it just said, the U, it didn't say UK on it. You get a stamp from the USA, it has to say USA. Anyway, because they were the first ones, so they don't have to put UK on there. You just, it's like it's like dot com or whatever whatever we do and say we don't um, the USA doesn't have to put dot USA or dot India dot I N for India it's dot com because they were the first one with the computer thing you see following on this anyway so so Anglo is the first one and you you can never surpass Anglo Anglo right but you can replace if you if you if you embrace this system of racist white supremacy, as an Anglo, you top dog, right? But then you could be a system of, let's say, uh, well, India, Indi Indian racist white supremacy. So white supremacy, you, you're doing a white supremacy system as an Indian. Um, let's keep on going. You could be, uh, 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 um, I'm just gonna name countries right now. A system of Chinese racist white supremacy, right? A system, you keep on whatever you want to say, right? You can system a black racist white supremacy, system of Negro racist white supremacy. You can, you can, right? So therefore, if you, if you're, say, if you're an American African, but you, but you, uh, uh, no, leave, let's, let's leave me out of it, let's leave my people out of it. So say, say you're in Africa, right? Say South Africa, I'm in South Africa, right? What they did, where they created this system when they when they had this armistice, if you write, and they were negotiating with the with the with the Boers, with the with the with the powers of England. That's not just the Boer, negotiating with the English, negotiating with the white folks, right? What happened there? Just a second, my eyes turn here. What happened there? They negotiated, and so the English, the British, the English, whatever they are, Great Britain, whatever they are, they got the banking. The Boers got the land. And they gave the, the, the I want to say, I want to be derogatory and say the darkies, but I'm not going to say it. But they gave the natives, you know, the, pol the politics and the social, and you know, you could sing and dance. But the power is in the finance, the land, and the finance and the land. So they kept the, kept, uh, uh, kept the power and gave you, like, like we learned in the States, that what, what Maynard Ferguson was the first mayor of Atlanta, when they, or we were not a mayor of Atlanta. Well, how could we not do it? Because they realized the power lied with, lies with the insurance companies, the finance. And this is, you know, you could think about this, but people don't, don't understand. So when this new, did they have this new government 
uh, agreement in South Africa. But if you look at who controls what, ain't nothing changed. So unless you shed some blood and destroy the system completely and, and create another system in your own image, you're going to have the same thing. I'm just saying. So my thing is that since, since, since I understand it's a system of whoever is there, the buffer that they put there for the, for the white supremacy, uh, so it doesn't matter what skin color you are or what country you come from. If you're, if you're doing uh, racist, white supremacy stuff, then you're in that system. You, you agree with that system. You see? So my whole thing is that the system has to be destroyed. The whole system's got to go. So that's my ultimate objective is to, is to end the system of, of, of send, end, end the Anglo, well, end the system of racist white supremacy. Now, Mr. Neely Fuller has an answer for that. He says you have to replace it. Now, if you destroy something, you have to replace it with something. He says replace it with a system of justice, meaning that, that basically, just, let me do it the, the Christian way. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. That's the system of justice. In other words, if you don't want to be killed, don't kill nobody. If you don't want to be treated unfairly, don't treat un the whole thing. So that's the whole point. So that's the ultimate objective is to get rid, is to get rid of the system of, uh, of, of, of the Anglo system of racist white supremacy and or and anybody that wants to participate in whatever their stripe is, get rid of that system, right? And replace it with a system of justice, uh, meaning uh, that, um, how, how does he say it? Uh, justice is defined as the guarantee that no one is mistreated and uh, that guarantee no one is mistreated, semicolon, um, and all who needs, all, all who needs help gets the most, uh, uh, not compensatory, but what's the word, but, uh, the most, um, I'm slipping the word, the most uh, constructive, the most constructive help possible. So if you're going to replace the city, you have to re you're going to do something, when you do, you have to do, mind the, Am I, what, what I'm, whatever I'm doing, is it constructive? That's what you're doing. That's Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And he's close to the ground, you know what I mean? He's like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be seven. He's like 94 years old now. And, and to me, he's my preacher. So I, I, I listen to some of his, well, what I can, I listen to his broadcast. I got his books, whatever I have, got his textbook, his one book, blah, blah, blah. And we actually, I don't know, and then man, man, I, I do a reading from, from, from his books every once in a while. So, so that's what, the, that, so my, my purpose is to get rid of racism and white supremacy. But what's the tool, what's the vector, what's the tool that I use? Because that's a, that's a purpose. Well, I, I, what constructive tool am I using to get rid of Anglo racist white or you know, Negro racist white supremacy or, or Chinese or whatever, whoever, or you know, Indian racist white. What tool am I using to get rid of that? Because they've created this uh, 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 Afro-Pian <laughs> racist white supremacy, Negro-Pian racist white What tool am I using? I use audio drama. Because culture, see they, they got the military, they, they, they take your mind with the whole academics or whatever have you, like that. But culture is something that comes from in. You know, I, 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 my, my teacher, I try to tell people, you have to release your own magnificence. And so when you're releasing your own magnificence, you're releasing the essence of you, that God, that, remember I talked about the, the great spirit, the great spirit in you, that has been guiding you, and you're the, on the limbs and the, and the mouth and the eyes for the great, well, I guess great spirit can see too, you know, like that. That's, so, so, so what do you have? Look, uh, one time, I was in, I was in Africa, well, uh, someplace, and some, some kids were saying, yeah, I want to get an AK-47, I'm going to shoot at all the white people. I said, look, I would respect you if if you took the minerals that they got the AK-47, which is in your ground here, and if you create, you know the AK-47 was created by a Russian guy because he was tired of seeing his com his, com his, his comrades, you know, the uh, rifle general, so he made this, 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 this gun that can go do all kinds of things. So now all liberation movements get that gun, but guess what? Christopher, that name guy. I think he's still alive. He's the one that created that. Now, unless you create that weapon that you're going to shoot and maybe you do the bullets and all this stuff, then you're useless because you got to buy it from the from the person that you, you you're going to gun down. And then now, now you got these people. You got like middle class people. Uh, I'm not let me leave South Africa alone because I'm still no, I won't get into that right now. But you know, you got these people and they're going to use. Uh, they're going to use the, the techniques of the colonizer 
When you burn something, think about that. Who did a lot of burning in, in, in triple land? The Vandals, the, 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 the Romans. So you're doing that thing. That's not how you fight. It's a, well, if you had warriors, okay, yeah, I don't want to hear all this stuff. All I'm trying to say is we have to use our cultural weapons, logic. Uh, just, you know, uh, think about it. Uh, they keep on uh, trying to uh, 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 appropriate our culture. And it's come to a point right now where they, they're like trolls under the bridge. As soon as we come with something, they jump right at me right away and jump in front of it and try to take it. But, they didn't, but we are constantly, we, we, I'm talking about American Africans right now, I don't know about anybody else. We, 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 we constantly continue to, to dig into ourselves and come up with something else. You know what I'm saying? What's the hottest thing on the planet right now? And then they got to try to jump in front of it. And it's really interesting. And that's a political thing. I was, um, at one point, I was hanging in New York with the politicians, you know, with the, you know, um, with the, uh, you know, Jay Raymond Jones, whatever that club up in Harlem, when the Charlie Rango comes from. <laughs> and Denny Farrell once said to me what that, he said, you know what a politician is? He sees where the crowd is going and he jumps in front of the crowd. And that's the definition of a politician, right? And that's the definition of a lot of people, what they do. But um, what I'm trying to get to is that my form, what I've done in audio drama, and I'm, I'm a bona fide as, as academia, academia, they cited me. I, I wanted to, and this long time ago, 2002, this book came out, this academic book came out, and I'm cited as one of the two revolutionaries in radio drama. I'm just saying, but I'm going beyond that. So I use audio drama as a tool for literacy, but also to, 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 to address what I'm trying to address. So, so my goal is to um, end racism, replace it with a system of justice, and the tool, the mind tool I use, the creative tool, the creative tool I use, the cultural tool I use is audio drama. Ta -da! Okay, so that's it. Uh, I talked way too much. This was a thing to tell you that, oh, a, a, a whole idea was this was the last thing I was telling you about this, my healing space here in, uh, in Oroville. I'm going to come back to it sooner than I think. Uh, I got a lot done. I got uh, this, this uh, dialogue done. I got cassavas done. I uh, got, got all kinds of healing. My healing is done. I still work on this. Because this Bell's palsy came down on me, I don't know. So, but 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 bodies heal better. I still got work on the uh, on the hamstring, but but I believe I'm a thousand times better. One thousand, at least eighty percent better than when I came. You know, my feet are much better because everything was like tight together. So now like that, I found a a, a great uh, healer that that was working on me. In fact, I got a session with him. What time is it? I better get going. I have a session with him. From my last session because I leave later on today. So I got a lot to do today. So I got to go, got to go, got to go. Talk to you again sometime. All right? Okay. <laughs>